The question has come up, can a homosexual be a Christian? Well, that is the question we want to answer today on The Beat. Hey everyone, my name is Alan Parr. Thank you all so much for tuning into The Beat. If this is your first time here, this channel is all about helping people like you grow spiritually by giving you truth, training, and teaching from the Word of God. Well, let me just start off by saying that I've got a whole lot to say about this subject. This question has come up a lot in the chat on YouTube. People have had questions about this, so I just want to take a few moments to address it. Now, let me just start with the biggest issue that I have within Christianity today in general. And the biggest issue that I have is the, that we have two groups of Christians that are on opposite extremes. And both of the extremes are really destructive to the Christian faith. You have, on one hand, you have this extreme group of Christians who are very, very judgmental. And they really don't care about uh, showing people the love of Jesus Christ. They just want to uh, just judge people and look down on people. And it's a miracle that anybody comes to Christ, the Christian faith uh, as a result of interacting with this group of Christians because uh, they're just so negative and judgmental and they do more harm and damage to the Christian faith than anything else. But on the other extreme, we also have this other group of Christians that are just simply going along with what the society says, what the culture says, what the surroundings are saying, and they're saying, well, you know what, because homosexuality is prevalent in our culture, it's an alternative lifestyle, you know what, uh, you should have the right to be whoever you are. Uh, I have equal, if not more, issues with that group because uh, they're too afraid to take a stand for what the Bible says. So with that being said, let's take a look at what the Bible actually says about this topic. Okay, so the first passage of scripture we're going to go to is the one that many homosexuals love to point to whenever they are talking about Christians and what Christians can and cannot do in reference to judging them. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 7, it says, Do not judge, so you will not be judged. So first of all, they say, you know what, Jesus himself, it's right here, it says it in red, that you do not have the right to judge me. Then it goes on to say, for in the way that you judge, you will be judged. And by the standard of measure, it will be measured to you. So basically what Jesus is saying here is that the same way that you judge other people, as hard as you are on them, whether you're homosexual or heterosexual, then that is the same measure of judgment that Jesus is going to use on you. Then it says in verse 3, why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, your homosexual brother, let me take the speck out of your eye? In other words, hey, you're a homosexual. Let me fix you. And behold, there's a log in your own eye. You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So pay attention, close attention to what Jesus is saying here. He's not saying that we cannot judge anybody ever for anything. He's simply saying when you do judge, this is the correct way in which you should judge, is first of all, take a look at yourself, get the log out of your own eye. Why? So that you can see clearly enough to be able to help somebody else take the speck out of theirs. So for the homosexual that says that Christians don't have the right to judge them, we actually do have the right to pass judgment, not necessarily on you, but the things that you are doing. And so with that being said, next I want to go quickly to a passage of scripture where many heterosexuals will use to justify their right to judge homosexuals. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, it starts by saying, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals. There it is. Look, it says it right there. The Bible says that homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the issue that I have is that you skip past all of these other sins that the Bible says that heterosexuals can commit as well. And notice the very first one on the list is fornication, right? Adulterers, idolaters, thieves, covetous people, drunkards. So people who get drunk all the time, people who lie, people who covet, people who steal. All of those are in the same category. So how can we as heterosexual Christians say that, you know what, this one sin of homosexuality is so much greater than all the other sins. And therefore, because of that, God will not allow them to go to heaven. Okay, now with all of that out of the way, I want to get to what I really want to talk about in this video. And I want to spend the next few moments talking specifically to the homosexual who claims to be Christian, who carries the name of Christianity. There are two major issues that frustrate me so much 
uh, in this area of homosexuality and Christianity. The first is that many homosexuals will hide behind the idea and say, you know what, well, this is how I've been born. This is how I am. This is who I am. Well, let's just talk a little bit about what the Bible says about how we were born. Psalm 51 says that we were all born into sin. So if we go the nature route and say, you know what, this is my nature, then what we're basically doing, and this is what frustrates me, is that we are uh, nullifying the very power of the cross because whenever you are born once, you're, you may be born with a sin nature, but whenever you become a Christian, you are born again. You're given a new nature. And so this new nature enables you to live above the sinful life that you've had and be able to experience victory over sin. The second problem that I have is that as homosexual Christians, you do not have the right or the free pass to just indulge in all of your sexual desires any more than a heterosexual does. And so you may say, well, you know, this is who I am, so therefore I have the right to express who I am. Well, what if you have a heterosexual person who feels as though, you know what, I have a desire to watch pornography or whatever sexual issues that they are dealing with. It doesn't matter whatever state you find yourself in, whether you are single and you have a desire for sex outside of marriage or you are married and you have a desire for sex outside of marriage with someone else, the same expectations apply, which is self-control. You do not, as a homosexual Christian, get a free pass to be able to indulge in everything that you wanna do while the rest of us simply have to struggle and live a life of self-discipline, self-denial, and self-control. So if you are a homosexual and you are first and foremost acknowledging that that lifestyle is a sin, you don't promote it, you don't celebrate it, uh, you don't uh, support it, and you are leaning daily on uh, the power that lives within you to exercise the self-control necessary to resist same-sex attraction, well, then I have the utmost respect for you, and I believe that you are saved just as any other heterosexual is. But if you are homosexual and you are hiding behind that, and you're supporting it, and you're going to gay rallies, and you are celebrating it, and you're just saying, this is who I am, then I cannot respect that lifestyle any more than I would respect the lifestyle of a heterosexual who beats up on women, who cheats people in business, or who uh, has adulterous affairs on their spouse. So here are my final thoughts on the issue. Can a homosexual be a Christian? Well, certainly they can, as long as they believe the same things about Jesus as a heterosexual believes. And my final message to heterosexual Christians is to stop living your life on both of these extremes that I talked about at the beginning of this video, where you're so judgmental or you're so passive about it, and also take a little bit more time and looking at your own life in terms of what uh, sexual sins or whatever sins in general that you need to clean up instead of pointing the finger at homosexuals. And then my last message to homosexuals is to stop hiding behind this idea that you were born this way because whenever you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you were born again. Okay, so I know this was a very sensitive issue and a very controversial one. So this is one where I would love to hear your thoughts. Please leave those in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Be sure and subscribe and check out some of the other videos on this channel. Hey, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time on The Beat.